My name is Lisa Niger Raina, and I always tell people I'm a school teacher during the day that Niger rhymes with diver, and Raina rhymes with China, which of course, for how much George and I go traveling, makes sense to have a travel name. So, one of the things that I thought about in starting this talk with Uncovering Jewish Morocco is that Jewish stories are really everybody's stories. There's so much about stories. And one thing I'd like to do right before we get started is make sure that no one here feels like a stranger. So if everyone could turn to someone that they don't know. But first I want to teach you some Moroccan Arabic. So, um sel here is good evening. So say um sel here. And smiti is my name. So I might say um sel here, smiti lisa. And Zuer is actually from Morocco, so he speaks much. <laughs> so, to be honest, when we first decided, when George first told me he wanted to go to Morocco, I wasn't so sure I wanted to go to Morocco. For poor George, I'm a very reluctant traveler. We did travel for a year in Asia. We said that we meandered from Indonesia to Mongolia for 11 months. And once we decided to go, I had every reason why we weren't going to go. What we're going to do with the cab, what we're going to do with the condo. And then, to be perfectly honest, a lot of times when we got to a new country, I cried. But <laughs> I survived. And I have to tell you my success story of the day. I caught a mouse. <laughs> I went to my house, I teach small children, I went to my house and I caught a mouse <laughs> on my way here and the mouse is in my house and I put down a little Tupperware and it jumped in the Tupperware and I closed it all up. So maybe before the end of the evening someone will teach me what I'm going to do with the mouse that was in my house. <laughs> I don't think I should talk about in Sanctuary how I might have to kill the mouse. Anyway, so if you would turn to someone and just say, meet your vessel here and good evening, and then we'll get started talking about Morocco so that everyone feels like they're welcome here. <laughs> supposed to think about the Jews left Egypt like we left from Egypt. And I was trying to get the kids to understand, and I was talking a lot about Congo, and I have some flyers here from Jewish World Watch and the programs that are going on to help the people in Africa. And the thing that I realized from my students is, and I think for maybe some adults, people didn't, my students didn't all realize that Egypt is in Africa. So I was talking to them about Morocco is in Africa, and Egypt is in Africa, and they were so surprised that the Jews were slaves in Africa. So I think it is really important to realize where things are and also to realize how enormous Africa is. 
There's been so much on the news about North Africa, but the thing that I think is amazing about this slide is almost all the other big countries fit in with some extra room. That's how big Africa is. So it's an amazing place of so many differences, having the biggest river, the longest river, and being the second largest of all the continents. So I, I do love to use maps. This map is from the Traveler Century Club which I recently joined is for travelers who've been to 100 or more countries. And the thing that I notice the most when I look at this map is how close Morocco and Spain are. So it's only nine miles. Of course, before I went on this trip to Morocco, I thought the Jews went into Spain in 1492 after they got kicked out. I thought that was the first time the Jews were in Morocco and studying for this talk and being in Morocco and meeting people and talking to Vanessa and her husband. I liked it when um, Vanessa talked about her father-in-law. He says that their family has been Jewish in Morocco for 900 years, and they'll be there for 900 more years. <laughs> and I just think that's a really impressive to feel so secure. I know for myself growing up in California, I think that something old is 150 years old. And to go to a place where things are 1,000 years old, or people moved many thousands of years, is a different feeling, but I think that it's very important to think about how close Spain is and how close Morocco is, that they're all neighbors. And then, of course, so much has been in the news about Libya and Egypt and Tunisia and just looking at where they all are in northern Africa and how close they are to the time of this strong. So this is a picture of Vulibus. And when I was there, Vulibus is very close to Meknes. And what we were told is the Romans built Vulibus. But the Romans didn't build it. It was first built as a Carthaginian site and the Romans took it over. And it was destroyed in 1755 by the Lisbon earthquake. And when I was thinking about this, I was thinking how much we have all been thinking about the people of Japan and the earthquake and the tsunami and how much devastation it can cause. So I. There were different people that were here. The main reason I put in this slide is because I wanted to talk about when the Jews first came to Morocco. And from the reading that I did and the talking to people, from the 6th century BCE, after the destruction of the first temple, the Jews crossed in the caravans with the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians were big travelers, and after the destruction of the first temple, the Jews started moving. Another big wave of Jews coming across northern Africa through the Sahara was when the Romans destroyed the second temple in, depending on who listened to, 68, 70 CE. But again, it was more Jews looking for where to live and where could be a good home. Now, I love this slide. I'm going to give you another word, but this is not actually Moroccan Arabic. It's Berber, which is Waha. So if you say Waha. Waha. So this is Abraham, or Abraham, who was our guide, and he took us, and that's the head of George's camel you can see there in the picture. And I think his family has been there for really hundreds and thousands of years, and we couldn't communicate with him very much, but Waha was a very important word. We heard that a lot. The Berbers, people believe, are nomad relatives of the ancient Egyptians. And one of the stories I really like, that one of the last battles before uh, before this area became Muslim, was that there was a Jewish Berber woman named Arena, and she led part of the battle for the last resistance against the Arabs. And that kind of reminds me of some of the stories of Shavuot, and I think it's really important to think about those different role models, that there's a lot in Morocco that we saw a lot of the cafes and drinking tea, a lot of men, and the women were other places, but I think that the women have always been very important. And I like that story about Dorina. But in the seventh century, the Islamic army crossed into North Africa. And I liked, uh, read one thing that said, Moulay Idris, who was an Arab noble, who was fleeing from persecution from Baghdad, and this was the quote I read, this was from the BBC, that he won respect from enough Berber tribes to create a dominant dynasty which I think means he was a really good fighter. 